Many people have problems with art and not with reality. So why is art different? It's pretty simple, right? This is knowledge, this is thinking, this is thought. Yeah, it does something strange with your head. Welcome to the Undergang Armchair. Bring it. Welcome to the Undergang Armchair. My name is Ondo. Well, gang, here we are again. Episode 89, just gliding ever so softly into number 90. Today is election day in the States. I already voted many weeks ago, so I'm just going to sit back and uh, watch them put out all the embers of this warehouse fire of an election. All I can say is, uh, let's see what happens. <laughs> Today we have a really fun one for you. I do indeed think you will enjoy it. It's Olaf Breuning, everybody. I've been a fan of his special world for a number of years now, and I finally had a chance to sit down with him and hear about it. That was on the eve of his opening last Friday. And uh, man, all I can say is that some people just have a, uh, a personal vision, and uh, there's no school or, or mentors to help them along. You just get out of the way. They got that. He obviously has a very special way of thinking. Uh, I love the combination of, of, of thoughtful and unserious at the same time. I think that's very much reflected in his work, and it really helps his work become unique. And as a thought process, it's, it's welcome. I really enjoy it. There's something to be said for that, especially in the art world. Afterwards, of course, I thought of a ton of questions I would have liked to have asked, but uh, we'll just have to take that next time. He has a show up at Neil Sterk Gallery right now. It opened last Friday, and uh, I strongly go suggest that you see it. It's called Cold Animals, and it's open until the 17th of December. How about that, huh? Anyways, I'll give the man the word now. Enjoy. So the quality has to be incredible, huh? It's these microphones and that Zoom thing. I would say it's adequate. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, you know, I'm not, I, I taught myself how to use this stuff by starting the show. And then it's been a long process of right. figuring out. I bought the wrong microphones twice and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I guess it's kind of like when you're trying to make a project that you've never made before. Like right. with clay, maybe, I don't know, you haven't made much clay work before, right? Never. So there's that whole process of, like, how does this work? And well, I, yeah, but in my case, it's better, you know, because I'm never perfect. My works are never perfect. So, But recording, that's something I understand it has to be. But it's like, you know, uh, with stereo systems, like, more expensive speakers sound better. Probably with microphones, too. Better microphones give better sound. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's gotten so much cheaper, in a sense, than it used to be. Yeah. But it's also... Uh, you know, there's so much out there. It's really hard to figure out what exactly Which is Which one, right. yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, you made films, so you must have kind of worked with higher-end sound in that case. Well, I tried. You know, I figured out that the sound is actually the most important, more important than um, than the, the image. So the sound has to be very good. And I, I, the last movie I did, actually, I made a compromise. I had a stick-on microphone on the camera because the actor was always more or less one meter away from the camera. His face was always straight in the film. And so I could leave his there, but it's not perfect. I, w I would wish I would have perfect sound there. It's so hard yeah. because you really have to be exactly the right space with the right volume. And as soon as one turns their head or right. anything, you know, it completely changes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the stick on micros, they, they are kind of good for voice, you know. Mm. But um, then they cause problems with the cables, right, I found yeah, out. You see the cable always and. Yeah, <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. No, it's not. Yeah, and you always hear the actor when he goes to the toilet, like give you a mouthful. <laughs> oh, that idiot director! Blah, blah, blah. Like he, the Robert Durst thing, wasn't that guy named Robert Durst, the guy on television who admitted to a murder when he was in the bathroom? All right, yes, yes. And the microphones were yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is just an amazing modern moment. Yeah, but I think that happens actually a lot. Yeah. What well, happened to Trump too? Happened to Trump too. Yes, exactly. So. Yes, that's true. Even to Trump. Yeah. yeah. Which is, uh, yeah, it is a, a very modern thing, I'd say, you know. 
used to be it used to be much easier to delineate when you were on and when you were off. Right. Yes. Yes. And also nowadays, I mean, the medium has been been more precious, especially film. I mean, you would only record when you had to record. But today, it's just they let it go and they let it just right. record, record, you record, catch record. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny that you talk about quality because, like, I mean, basically, this show I do very little research. Yeah. I'm terrible at doing that research. I just meet people and I like to talk to them about right, what yes, they yes, do. Yes. But your work is uh, very, you know, it, it appears to be easy. Yep. But apparently you do spend a lot of time perfecting it, the exact right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's in, in that case, uh, I mean, as you know, like film and, and, and stuff like that, that anyway takes a lot of time. Um, but when you see these drawings, see these simple drawings in these black frames, um, that big head there, for example, I mean, I... I do them small in a lot of size, and then my wife, Makiko, she's Japanese, she does them big, and I mean, it took her maybe two or three days to do this drawing. Wow, which because, looks like a simple line drawing. Yes, but you know, each line has to be perfect, and um, I think yes, sometimes, often, as we know in life, simple things, we always underestimate them, they can uh, sometimes be more, um, give you more pain in the ass than complicated things. Because you see it better, you see the mistakes better, they're just right in your face. Right. Well, it's also about clarity of vision. It may be that it's simple lines, but you have a very specific idea of how exactly it's going to be manifested. Right. And that that, that, that takes the work, you know. That takes work, but that's that's in general something I do like, to do uh, simple things in that way that uh, I, I, I like to tell stories, and I like to tell stories for many people and um, make it accessible to many people. Mm. And I think that is, um, it's not easy because when you like try to say something simple, it can be in, in one point also very dumb and, and too simple. So it's a, it's a fine line too. Well, that's something also that artists get kind of beaten out of them in art school, is that things should be more complex and have more layers of meaning yes. and be so multidimensional that perhaps your average person doesn't have the time to unpack all the meaning yes. in it. Well, you know, that's like one one component of, of contemporary art. It has to be complicated. <laughs> it has to be... I mean, you know, it's just... Uh, the, the people in contemporary art laugh uh, when they see something they cannot explain and then there is a big story behind. So you see, like, something, you would never know what it is, but then someone tells you, oh, yes, um, you know, that is actually that that rusty piece is coming from like South, um, South Africa, from the apartheid where some, someone beat uh, a, a policeman, beat like we did and blah, 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 blah. At the end, there's a rusty piece lying there. And, and I think it's, it's very interesting, but it's not my cup of tea. I, I want to tell stories where it's straight. It's, I, I, I don't want to hide behind certain kind of, curtains i want to i'm gonna just mm -hmm. when i want to say something i want to say it and i will probably approach this scenario i just talked differently maybe with a line drawing people would understand mm -hmm. see a policeman like hitting someone or but that's you know that's a personal preference sure but i think it's also a a, a strength in your work I mean, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to have to fight myself here because I really want to talk about humor and how funny it is. But that's, that's something you get all the time, I imagine. Oh, it's absurd. It's right. funny. It's, you know, and I think it is funny, but the strength actually sometimes lies elsewhere in like the breaking <coughs> down of things to yes. a simpler point of view and, a, and, and just straight communication. You know, I mean, that's another thing. I always think it's it's also strange that people would um, always put humor down or like, you know, oh, it's just funny, ha, ha, ha. But I, I, I do believe that humor is actually a very intellectual language in itself. It's a very complicated language. Only people with a certain um, kind of, I mean, for example, my two cats, they never smile. I, like, I don't think they chat, tell any jokes or they're dead. Animals, for example, they don't have, I mean, maybe some advanced, like chimpanzees, they probably have some humor too, but uh, usually that's something very human, very, we learn over, and I think also when you are, uh, when you have to care that you put bread on the table to survive, probably humor is very small, so humor is a luxury product of people who have education, who have uh, the, the luxury to 
take a step back and, and look at things. And, and, and sure, I see myself growing up in Switzerland, for sure, country club of that planet. I'm already privileged. And then uh, as an artist, yeah, but I mean, I can take a step, a step back and look at that world. Mm. And that's exactly maybe why I think uh, humor is for me an important language. But do you find it hard to retain your humor? I mean, there's a lot of ways this world isn't very funny. You know, there's a lot of ways it is funny, and there's a lot of ways it's absurd. But I'm trying to actually, kind of apropos, I'm trying to right now bring that back into my life because I've been working for 10 years really hard to get in a position in which I can show artwork and, and take that step back that you're talking about. Yeah. And I'm also now realizing I need to stop being so serious because I've been working so focused and so straight line, just like yeah. you said, putting bread on the table, that I actually have to actively relax, just right. relax, you know, and that's hard. That's hard, but no, I think, you know, that's, but again, uh, art in, its, in itself is... For each artist, its own um, um, its own medium. How you talk, and I think there are many different ways. I mean, there, there are some artists that have no humor. They are very like, but they do great art mm. too. I, I think for me, it's not. I don't say like on the art with humor is great. It's just what I think. I do like um, in general people with humor. I do like other artists with humor, and it. it's just my preference of 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 um, maybe in my case also like you know. It's a reaction to the tragedy of life in general. I mean, when you a little bit reflect with, without having big philosophical thoughts about life, but just look at the situation that you will die. That's very frustrating. You can do whatever you want. And I think these things, in my case, would, would uh, result not in a, in a frustration, more in a kind of, uh, also not cyn cynicism. I'm not I, I, I'm positive, um, cynical, I guess. Uh, but I, I, you know, I do like to to draw that image in a kind of. What else can you have than humor when you look at that situation? For me, right. Well, it is. It is a. a I'd say a healthy reaction to some sort of, a, <coughs> you know, some sort of pessimism. Uh, it's hard though. It's really, it is, it's a total challenge. I don't know. I mean, do you find yourself, is it natural for you? Have you always been this way or do you have to fight to retain? No, no, that's, that's a perfect thing. You know, when, when I'm a, I'm a happy person in general and I, I do my art always from a happy place. I mean, I have some artist friends, they have to put a knife on their, on their throat, like, you know, to nearly kill themselves until before they can do art. But I, I always came, came out of a happy place. And I think at that moment when I'm, excited i yeah these stories come up in my in my mind and um yeah i, I don't think and the, the nice thing it's also when i look back at, <clears throat> i made these two books now one with my drawings and one with my work from the last 15 years and interesting is that all these mediums i use from film to drawings to sculptures and photos the humor or the language is always going through all the things and obvious that's something i guess where I find the typical me, what I, I'm happy to have and want to next 10, 20, 30 years continue to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look back uh, at your older work, there is that through line. It is consistent in that way. And it is fun and, you know, positive and maybe even a little flippant. Yeah, po positive, but also like in a, in a way that sometimes it's, Tragical. It's like kind of you look at something and think, is that funny? Maybe it's not. You know, um, right? Black comedy, kind of. Yeah. But did you? You so I know you studied photography, but did you go to art school? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I yes, for four years I was, went to art school uh, with the focus on photography. Was that the plan from the beginning? I'm going to be an artist. Not really. No, I don't think so. I. Um, I mean, I always uh, have to say my, my father gave me a camera when I was 16 and then I started to be obsessed with photograph, photographing the world, myself, people around me. And, and so then at that moment I, I realized I want to work for myself. Mm. But I did not know that would be to be an artist, but that developed over the, over the years. I ended up to be an artist. I think that's a smart, smart way to sneak in too because being deciding you're going to be an artist can... Um create a lot of difficulties also in terms it's of just the parents 
<laughs> yes, also that. <laughs> was that in Switzerland, though, that you studied? Yes, yes, yes. In okay. Zurich. And by the time you were done, you knew you wanted to show work in an arts art context. Yes, by the time I was done, I, I was, you know, what other, what other option would I have? I mean, I then uh, worked for a short while in a bank after school because I would never want to compromise making money with my own work. And I had like three days in a bank. It was horrible. I mean, I was, <laughs> was bad in it, you know, giving in numbers in a computer was not my sure, thing. Sure. And then I worked in a radio station writing um, some news on the television, but not for big production, just on the other side. Was also not really my cup of tea. Um, so yet I wasn't happy that my art career picked up because I could focus on what I really love to do. Right, without and the distractions. Right, without the distraction. But the, uh, until today, I mean, I do it now since maybe 20 years or 18, 20 years and make my living of it. And I'm now in a, in a mid-career situation where I'm sometimes worried, you know, how the future looks. And then I always think like, oh my God, what would I do? And besides being a waiter, I have a good balance with some like, you know, plates and stuff on my hand. I can do that. Besides that, I, I, I don't really know what I would do, so that's not the chance. There's no backup plan. <laughs> There's no backup plan. That's, I kind of have the same problem. That's, But that's once you decide to do something in life, then you have to go for it. Yeah, yeah, and I think also the thing you said about how the idea that like you just knew you wanted to work for yourself. Right. That yeah, comes I, before even being an artist in a way. Right, I, I think so. To have no boss, to be like independent and... yeah. I had a, uh, a, a my, or my dad had an old Swedish friend who worked for himself for many years, and uh, one of his favorite sayings was, uh, "Working for yourself is like working for the biggest asshole you've ever met." Yeah, probably. <laughs> no, it, it's true. I mean, it it has difficulties too, because you don't have your. There's no one. I think it's sometimes easier as as as, as a human when someone tells you what to do. And so there's less debate internally. <clears throat> yeah, um, but I mean, you do seem to be enormously productive. Yeah, I, I, I produce always. So you have no problem. You don't have that uh, today I wake up and I'm worthless and I can't do anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ask my wife. She <laughs> poor thing. Now, because I, you know, now I live in the forest away from all the things, you know, like uh, after 15 years, Manhattan, it's now in the forest with the black bears. And um, so my wife, Makiko, uh, is. We have a lot of visitors coming. We are not like alone there, but mostly we spend time together. And sure, in the winter time, for example, when when it's dark and so, and I, there there are weeks of like agony of like, oh, what is mine? What do I do next? I'm worthless as an artist and blah blah. Sure, my ego sometimes or my my image of myself is sometimes low too. But I think that's normal. Absolutely, and then it's really important, right? And I, I think. That, that, um, but you know, I always say that the biggest art to be an artist is to handle these situations, to be as an artist, uh, ready for these times when you, when you suffer. Mm. Um, because it, it can only be when you're a young artist and you're hyped, you're like hot, all the people want to something from you, you have like millions of shows, you don't even have time to think about what they do, then you're like, you know, uh, sure, you're always on, 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 on. But I think when you do it for longer, there there have to be times where you're off and then on again. I mean, it's that kind of when you have um, happiness can probably also not be just uh, can only be enjoyed when you have like um, suffering. Yeah. So I think that's maybe the same. But it's sometimes not not easy that um, especially when it's an artist when you don't have an idea about a new body of work you want to do and you just don't figure it out and. Right, you're just sitting there and you got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's been some interesting uh, psychological studies done with people who win the lottery, for example. Yeah. And their happiness goes through the roof. Yeah. But very swiftly goes back down to about 60, 70 percent. Oh yeah, yeah of, sure. Of, of however you'd rate it from one to ten or something. Yeah, yeah. And that is uh, that seems to be a human condition. Thing. Oh sure. No matter what. Yes. You reach your goals, you're ecstatic, and then it's back to real life. Exactly, but that's a, the engine what drives us forward. You know, same in love. We like to fall in love. We like to do this. You know, like I think that that is how how we work. Um, but the nice thing is when you're an artist and you produce artworks. They are in a way like your children, so you 
when I look now back in my monograph the last 15 years and I see all the works, I kind of I remember the, the suffering in it. I remember the happiness in it. So that's, that's a kind of, it's like a, a diary. Yeah. That's nice. When did you move to New York? Um, it was 2001, beginning of 2001. Yes. Right before September 11th. Yes. Um, I mean, was that? Were you just? Were you working there at a bank in Switzerland and thinking, "I got it, I got to get." Oh, out no, 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 not that bank thing. I, I really worked on it for like maybe three months in the bank. And uh, but I mean, did you just think like, "I got to get out of here. I got to go to a place like New York"? Or mm -mm. Oh, no, no, no. I I was like fortunate enough in Switzerland. Then after like art school, I finished ninety five. So that was five years before I went to New York. And in that time, I, I established. Uh, my work, uh, and I was kind of in Switzerland, uh, had a career, like, you know, I won all the, the grants you can win. Um, I was like, you know, the up coming new star in Switzerland. So it was, and then I won that scholarship from uh, the city of Zurich, one year New York City. So that was uh, one of the prizes I won. And then I went. But I was not like, oh, yeah, I have to go to New York. You know, it's, uh, that was never my dream. Mm. But then I went there and I fell in love to the city and I stayed. Mm. And you say you live outside now in the forest? Where's that? That's two hours away, uh, upstate New York. Mm. It's cold in the winter. Not cold in the city. A little bit colder, but yeah. But it's it's beautiful. Well, it's interesting because so many people go to New York to become artists, right? Yeah. It'll work if I become a, if I go to New York, then I can become a proper artist because that's where art happens. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's often, uh, yeah, often maybe right. New York is look. I mean, New York is a place where all the people who want something from life they go there between twenty and thirty-five or forty. So that's the age when people want to be productive. Then New York is the place to go because when you put energy into it, energy comes back. Right. Not always, but. To be an artist, I would. When someone comes from Switzerland or Denmark, I would tell each Danish artist, "Hey, stay here and make your base here work." You know, and then because once you go to New York as a poor artist, then you have to live really, really far out in Brooklyn. There are millions of other artists. You know, it's just I don't think it's so. It's better to have something going on and then go there. Yeah, I, I think so. The focus, because the biggest thing is, I think, to focus on your work, on your language, what you want to, what you want to say. Mm. And uh, I always believe once you do that, things come automatically. Mm. It sounds easy. Maybe it's, it is that simple, but it's it's in reality it's harder. I think for reality, at least a lot of people. Sure, yes, because there's so many, so many artists. Uh, yeah, the competition is... So many competitions and... Yeah. But, I mean, did you find that New York was conducive to your work? Did you stay there because you found that you made better artwork that you were there? No, 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 no. I, for me, it was always sure I could, like, live in the desert or now live in the forest. As long as I have internet connection, I'm actually okay. Hmm. Um, but New York was, for me, more like to... I run away from the Swiss mentality because uh, like maybe it's that's similar like Denmark it's a very um, yeah for example here on the streets with bicycles I mean you guys are robots on bicycles you know like, <laughs> when I saw Philip coming the first time picking me up the hand up like for stopping and like you know right. no one will cross the red light it's it's all very well organized and it's a system or in New York you can forget any system, you know, it's just chaos. Yeah. And I, I always liked that, and especially coming from Switzerland where the systems are even more extreme than here, I guess. Uh, I, I like that freshness of of all possible, no one gives a shit, and uh, that was very refreshing. Mm. So that's maybe the reason why I stayed, not because I did better art there. Mm. And also I, I got a big gallery there, so that was the other reason why I stayed. Yeah. That helps for sure. Yeah. But I mean, it, it strikes me as like a question of inspiration too, because your work is based, to my eyes, off of life and, and, and your experience as a human being. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, New York's a crazy place. Your experience there is quite different than it would be elsewhere. But uh, perhaps, yeah, like yeah, you say, you can just be in the desert. Yeah, no, but you're, you're right. And I think about it, sure. Each day I went to the same uh, restaurant for breakfast in New York and only on the way there, this 10 minutes walk, 
was these are hundreds of people and it was kind of you have an input but you know in one point to think about life like I do with my drawings or with, with these ceramics here you can also think in a universal term about humans and, and I mean I'm 46 I have already enough uh, stories and experience with life and humans so you can also reflect and think about it you don't have to have it permanently in front of your face right well, your work is very non-specific too, in that sense. Right. You know, it's not a, a, a story about that person there mm. or that event there. Right. That, that's true. That's right. Yeah. That's maybe something I like to speak in a very universal terms about things. And that goes back to that communication. Back to that communication. You know, that you want to talk to people and you want to communicate without kind of hidden behind layers of uh, meaning or or any sort of like the common arts discourse about how it should be complicated or any of that stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I, I really don't... Hmm. That's really... I really don't know because obvious... I mean, I'm interested in a lot of things, but it's never like something that would specifically like interests me so much that I would say I want to dedicate just the work right. I mean certain themes I would, I would shoot a photograph with the four uh, or five boys in, in Ghana holding a $20 a bill like um, poor poor black kids like they, they, they literally work on a dump and uh, very toxic waste and they, they work they're poor kids uh, and I gave them the $20 bills and they would hold, hold it and smile with a big big smile on the faces and they look at their photo and they think it's it's so wrong but I mean it, what I want to do is like I want to speak in a uh, universal term about um, the, the, the for example the western world guilt towards Africa so what do we do how do we you know f what do we just send clothes there shoes and whatever <laughs> and that that is would be like a focus on a, on a thematic um, thing I want to talk about right. uh, but but I would never go more specific to talk about that that site in Ghana and make a work about this site where it's... And a lot of artists would do, they would go there and would document the whole site and document people and then they would make a show in with, with vitrines and like, you know... And it's very problematic often, to it, me at least. It, it could, it's not an approach, it's more, it's more a serious approach, you know, like... Um, but for me, I always want to keep even there at distance, I want to speak about things is, you know, because maybe also don't want to have an, op I haven't, I've always opinion, I'm a person with opinion, unfortunately, but <laughs> I never want to make an opinion with my art, what nails things really down so that I, because I know how, how many possible ways there are to talk about things. So I don't want to become that asshole who like kind of says, now we have to all think about the woman right in Iraq. Right. And I'm not even a woman, but I just say, you know, like, there are certain things where I feel, would I really want to help the world, the world in this way? I would be a social worker. I would do other things, you know, to really approach this world in a real way and not kind of in that fake art world where, way where at the end all this ends up in a fucking white cube behind glasses in a vitrine. And it's right, it doesn't help anybody. The art crowd again can look at it and say, "Oh, yeah, it's bad. In, in, in women are really like mistreated in Iraq, you know." Right. Uh, but that, that the kind of, again, we know it already. We know it already. Right. I think it's often. I think it's it's such a phony thing to do that. It, it, sometimes I I don't I just don't understand it. How that, you know. But maybe that's that gravity people always look for in contemporary art, to have that, that, you know, to be a part of that world. And that's maybe also honest, I don't know. You know? I think a lot of people also know that it attracts attention. It's an easy way to attract attention. If you are walking down the street in New York and you're worried, you know, you want to go get a cup of coffee and someone says, hey, you might think your cup of coffee is important, but look at this person over here. I feel like it's easy to get that attention and that yeah. maybe even unconsciously people are attracted to that sort of thing because they know that it will be easier to point to. And it's very delineated, right? Like you say, no, everybody knows. Everyone knows, but maybe these, these artists, they really, really are deeply, deeply moved by it and, and try to, they could really also be, that's why I don't want to charge it at all. I mean, it's, it's just 
just I, I talk about that because he talked about how I approach um, my, my comments to this world. And I, you know, I wish sometimes I would have also more that specific point of view that I would see something it's like, oh my God, I have to really make now that movie about or like this work about this, you know, native people in South South America jumping from a cliff to catch butterflies or whatever. I mean, there's something existing and an artist would make a work about it because it's beautiful and it's like something strange, we don't know. I wish I would have more that specific point of view. Why though? Why do you wish that? Yeah, because sometimes I feel I'm like, you know... Eh, probably it's always, we, wonder, <laughs> we, we always wonder what we don't have. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> the grass is always green on all the time. No, it's just seeing sometimes. I, I, you know, because he would be. I mean, I, I, I try to be interested about the world and about about that life. But once you realize a little bit how it goes, then it kind of. I can I can make many more works of like small guy chomping down a building or, you know, like uh, although these these ceramics are actually nice in the in the selection of the 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 stories they talk about. But hey, what do I know? Let's see the thing. I, I talk with people like you. Sometimes I have no fucking idea what I say. So, <laughs> but that's the beauty of being an artist, right? You get to you get to try that shit out, and you yeah, get to yeah, try I, and see how does this talk to someone? Because like you know, I just had a show this summer. And I would try to talk to people a lot and be like, here's what we did, here's what I did. Nah, nah, nah. And every single person had a completely different idea about right. what they got out of it. Yeah, so yeah. if I'm trying to be specific, it might be pointless anyways. Because yeah, yeah. they're just going to go ahead and, uh, well, I had pancakes for breakfast this morning, so that's what's on my mind. Right, yeah. You know, and so in that sense, you're really able to talk to more people by having less of, a, of an opinion in that sense. Yeah, or, or to motivate people to see things, first of all, like to do like, Keep, the, keep them invited to come in and, and, and enjoy and then maybe think, uh, think about the gravity of it and not, you know, there's a moment to show at the uh, uh, Kunsthalle Charlottenburg about um, global, uh, I don't know the, the, the title of the show, but it's like there are maybe five or six artists invited to talk about some specific global, global um um, situation in other countries like um, in South Africa or um, well, in the I Middle East in North Africa I think yeah did, did you saw the show I did yeah yeah and I, I just when I went to that show I thought again yeah that's that's a noble approach you know maybe the curator also I mean there's a lot you can write a lot lot about it because obviously that's that's a problem uh, internationally we, we have to talk about but when I saw the artworks for example that that big installation, the big room with the towels and the thing on the floor and the balls on it. I really thought for myself, why? Why? What does this? I mean, what me? does that tell me? That the, the building outside was beautiful with the with the with the bags. With the bags. Off I the loved that, but that's the how something. Side. You're right, but that makes so much sense. You you get it right away. But then all the other things in there, I, I felt, oh my god, why art has to be always so abstract and complicated? Why? why what is it? I, I, I cannot see one movie more where I see an unsharp person standing there in a slow motion and like it repeats itself. I cannot look at it anymore. I, I, don't, know, I don't know who can, honestly. Many not completely brain dead. Everybody apparently, though, that's the problem. Yeah, but the, I, I, I don't know. I mean, who... I just think sometimes... And, and don't call me with that, that bullshit that, oh, yeah, right, you know, it's like, you know, it's sensitive and it's whatever. It's not it's a platitude since many years in, in contemporary art. It's not nothing new. It's nothing you would be surprised. It's something just, again, you see, okay, that's a stereotypical artistic strategy to do things. Mm. And I get tired of that. As an artist, I, 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 I'm happier that I, that I, for myself, think at least, you know, I don't try to push it around, you know, with my language. Hmm. I don't try to make it um, adjust to a certain way contemporary art sees itself and, and want to be, wanna be uh, received. And um, that's, now, that's now, I mean, not really so much I want to comp- 
explain because it, it's, it's possible, because the beauty today is that all is possible, in, even in contemporary art. But often I, what I feel just, what makes me a little bit uh, moved or um, not angry, but kind of upset is just that so many things I see, I feel often it, it is so stereotypical, it couldn't be more stereotypical. It's not surprising. I cannot see one vitrine more of like an artist putting some, some like pieces of notes and photos in it. Like, you know, you stand in front of it and would, would you have like five hours time and like have the artist shrink next to it also to explain you what's, what's going on? Yes, but I, I believe it is in a very short, short time where people see so many things, they're all floated. And then again, you can say, okay, art, contemporary art gives you another picture of it. You need time. And, but, um, I'm, I'm conflicted with that. I, I don't know myself what I really should think about it. And uh, whenever someone listens now to that, please, I, I'm not someone who says something bad about it. I just, when I speak like that, I try just to understand for myself what it is. That I go to a show like that in the, in the Charlotte, Charlotteburg and uh, I would just be confused. For me as an artist, mm. uh, and I, I cannot get in there. I cannot have an entry in there. I just am outsider. Right. Well, no one can say right. that we're not allowed to talk about it, you know. Right, but no one does. I mean, not so many, I guess. So. But the, it's like you say, it is open now. There is the chance for everything. Right. And while you were telling me that, one thing that struck me was that, uh, you know, you could say that these people are very earnest. They're very earnest in their desire to communicate yes. something. But they're also involved in a method of communicating which looks in, and talks a certain way. But... I think what people don't realize is that your work is earnest too. You're very earnest about life and about, you know, the larger pictures that you're looking at. So it doesn't have to necessarily be convoluted to be earnest. You know, it's just subject yeah, matter. It, you're completely right. And that's why, again, I don't want to, when so long the artist is really honest and, and, and has that honest approach, and it's not just a strategy to, to, to succeed as a contemporary artist to do this, this kind of art. Um, so long that is, I'm really completely fine with it. But um, I'm often wondering what the thing. I mean, there's like the urge to say something about this world, to to have the luxury as an artist. To again, you're not having a job from nine to five. No one tells you to do. So you can you can wake up in the morning. You can do what what you please to do. So then you have like an idea of what you want to talk about. And definitely, it's always the big question, I mean, how then someone, from all the possible ways to talk about something, has, like, the choice to make it most unapproachable for other people. <laughs> That's for me, like, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get that. I just don't understand it. Why? I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I, I'm just blown away by, by that. That's the problem of education, right? Don't you think? Because I think that, like, I went to art school and it was very much about, like, oh, well, they're referencing this and that's why this is important. And, meh, 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 you know, it goes on and on and on, that whole yeah. explanation of why something matters instead of right. just deciding, oh, this matters or doesn't matter to me. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the, the art school is another thing. I mean, art school is cool. It's like you learn to, to you know, make references to know what, what history is and, you know, like, that's important. Um, I think it's 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 also important. But the reference, what I want to say, maybe also, it's we 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 are in a time where the reference in itself, it's it's also very difficult because the archive is grew so much the last ten years with the internet. That's it's incredible. So that's even not even the references are not really um, universal anymore. We, there's no common sense language anymore. So someone can talk about this. Or about this, but I think in, in contemporary art, there's still a certain certain islands of you know how do you have to talk about something, and that's just how you have to do it. And trend, I mean, you can and, just and straight trend. up call it oh, trend. Yeah, oh yes, you know. yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's that is um, yeah, that's why I'm in the forest. You know, <laughs> really, honestly, I I, I, see, I see I start to complain. I'm such a complainer. When I was living in New York, I was complaining more. Now I went to the forest. I I kind of like became uh, very peaceful and no complaining but when I start thinking again about it 
Sorry to bring you there. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, isn't it nice also to look at all that, uh, all this stuff we're talking about and then just be like, yeah, fuck that. I'm going to do what I want to do. That's a huge opportunity. Yeah, it, it, sure. I mean, it's, but it, for me, it's a bit frustrating because I would, I would love to have more part in that art world in that way that I, I could go to see more shows and more things and really, and there, there are many good artists and, and good shows, but, um, I, I, I'm personally maybe more, you know, that's, but that's maybe what it is, you know, because I want to talk about the world, so I'm maybe more interested in the world in itself. I'm interested in movies, in, in furniture, in architecture, and like, you know, I'm, I'm sucking in the world what it gives me. And I think I was never an artist who would just be happy to focus on the art world. And there are many artists who just focus on the art world. And I think that's maybe the difference. But, um, yeah, what, absolutely. What gives me then really problems to, to have, to be a tolerant visitor of museums and be just, all right, that's like, no, shut up, Olaf, that's just good. They said it was good, so therefore it's good. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, that brings me to the awful question, which I still don't really know how to ask, but I'm very interested in, which is kind of about the development of ideas. You know, uh, asking where someone gets their inspiration from is a horrible yeah. question. But I'm just thinking in terms of, of, of like, you know, you've got broad stuff here, but you chose specifically to do that. How do you take all of life and, you know, choose something to make a drawing of or a photo of or a sculpture of? Like, how do you, how do you sustain your interest in specific things? Well, I mean, there's specific things. There is the, the ideas. You want to talk about something. Then there's the aesthetic qualities. I mean, when you work uh, in a metal sculpture or a marble sculpture, there's often also like the form it kind of dictates a little bit, you know, certain ways with that material you can say or do that. Um, but mostly in my case, it's it's always it starts with the drawing. So I sit, I have small notebooks, and I sit and have think about stuff and make drawings, and then from that uh, the works. So as you can see, these drawings, I don't even they're easy, but they are actually like you know I. The book I did now, there are 220 drawings from the last 15 years, so there's not so much. And I feel uh, many, many others I just, they, they remain in the, in the drawing book. They never, I never make them big. Right, there's only what, six drawings here or something? Six like drawings. That. But then, for example, the ceramics here, they are based on the drawings, the most of them. So they are actually, um, very connected to the drawings. When you have a chance and you look at my drawing book, it's, you will find a lot of those coming out of that book mm. and also I had to do it because I found I struggled a long time to do these ceramics because my Swiss artist friends, colleagues um, we are not close friends but I know them, uh, Fischli Weiss now only one one remained of, of the very good artists and uh, they made this very famous work maybe you know this work um, uh, oh, what was the title, my god uh, anyway, there are also like ceramics this size, and there are about maybe three or four hundred they did. And they had uh, a show, I mean, they showed them all, but they had a retrospective show in, in the Guggenheim last year. I think I have seen those, but I don't know. Right, very well. beautiful works. And then I thought, oh my God, I mean, I can small ceramics, like figurative, telling stories. Sure, I mean, it is like, has a lot to do. But then I said, okay, they are based on my drawings, and I do them in color, so it's a difference. And I think also, like, it's, it's not really a different story. But I was in the beginning a little bit afraid that, uh, that the whoop is too close to the, the fish device work. But why not leave it? Like, it's, you know, why aren't you just a drawer? Why do you make sculptures and photos and all those other things? Why not just leave them as drawings? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the thing. I mean, I'm always then getting bored. I can make enough drawings that I want to do something different. Now, I made enough ceramics, I'm happy to do a photograph. I mean, that's actually beautiful that I have these mediums I can just uh, choose. And uh, it's, it's always a new kind of... I wish I could be a painter too. <laughs> sure you can. I tried many times, yeah. failed many times. It just doesn't work out for what you're trying so, to make. 
yes. Well, you're very formal in a weird way. As much as it is simple, it's also very formal. Your photographs are are are, yep. are technically perfect, right? And and your drawings, like you said, it takes several days to make this line drawing, right? You yep. know, so uh, it's not David Trigley. It's not just wah, yep. wah, wah, yep. and I'm done. You know, it's yep. it's it's very very. And I, I imagine you throw a lot of stuff out too. That's just not good. Oh enough. yes, yes. Or remake it yep. and remake it and mm-hmm. remake it. Yeah. Is that just aesthetics, or is that like it carries the message better? Or? It carries the message better, I guess. But again, just in my point of view, you know, when I look at something, I change it so long until it's just right. But that's you do that too as an artist. That's what we do as artists. We work on something until it seems to be right. And um, I definitely I take that take that in that sloppiness the works look they, they look sloppy and not really perfect the ceramics are far away to be perfect but um actually i redid a lot of them just to have that they that look like cartoons they look like yes like drawings of cartoons yeah. you know um do you but how do you know it's done how do you not just keep f- changing it forever uh, it, with the ceramics, really good because you know I was on the time pressure. I had only like three months to produce them. I, I produced fifteen more. I will show in Dubai mm-hmm. next week. And the, the problem is with those is always um, you do them, uh, form them, and that's called greenware when they are like very um, you, not They're burned. They're completely fragile. Yeah, they fall apart. Ve- oh my god! The, oh my god! Yes. Okay, that's already a problem. And then you color them and you burn them and then. One maybe explodes in the oven, and then and so I was with these 36 works I did with many many parts already on the limit of the time, and so I didn't have the luxury to really. I only changed certain things when it was really not good. But mm-hmm. um, but if you do have all the time in the world, let's say with the photograph, yeah, how do you know it's done? When it's yeah, photograph is mostly based also on the the performance where it happens. You know, I work with a lot of people, so it's, you organize it very well, and then just at that moment, it is done, and then it's just done. They don't really... You might have possibly this is Photoshop today to, let's say, uh, there's an arm in the wrong, it could maybe change stuff like that. But otherwise, photographs are easy in that way. They're just... that moment, they're done, they're done. And then you have to ex- accept that, you know. Well, you also have to know what you were looking for. Right, exactly. Yeah. And Mo- that's hard. Or for me, it is. When, once you have an idea, the rest is then just a kind of organizing it, yeah. Do you ever make like experiments where you don't know where you're going just to see what happens? I, I did <clears throat> many, many uh, experiments. Like this summer, I did a lot of painting experience with painted with smoke, painted with wax, painted with different things and spent a few weeks on it. I was very obsessed, but um, then I let it sit for like a few weeks more, looked at it again and said, no, it's mm. just not, it's just not. Um, and uh, that, that sometimes happened, but it's never really nice. I don't like it. You know. The feeling of not succeeding with whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, it's a kind of like frustrating. Yeah, but maybe in a longer, longer term, it's you get back to it, maybe, and you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm in a process right now where I'm going through a lot of old stuff and seeing what worked and what didn't right. work, and trying to carry yep. the valid things forward. Right. I just get confused about what it is I actually want sometimes, and if I stare at something for too long, also I start to lose the ability to say if it's done or not. Yeah, no, to let stuff sit is very good, you know, yeah, like absolutely. to let it, and then you just see it again, and you think that's good, and otherwise. It's a lot of, that's practice too, you learn your own practice. You you learn, but also, you know, you have to be forgiving too, because it cannot be that all your works are just good. <laughs> that's maybe also work what is sometimes not so good, and then you think, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, I mean, sure. in a Right, throwing stuff away is also like just saying this is not good enough. I'm going to try something else. That, uh, I, I think drawing away for me would be a complete failure, yeah, sure. But otherwise, there are certain things I would just keep in. But in these 36 ceramic works, there are some I think really strong, and then some 
I think they only work in the context of, of the 36 works. Um, but that's, you know... Have you ever done any teaching? Yeah, they just hear me before complaining about stuff. Do you think really I, I, I would be the same asshole that the students? <laughs> I, I, I know, I, I, students need an asshole though sometimes. Yeah, but you know, I, I, I always, I, I go sometimes talking in universities and then I have studio visits and I, I really understand that, you know, like all these ideas, these very sensitive artist ideas we talked about with, with, with the opposite of my, my practice, you know, understanding in an in in art school is super important because people learn their sensibility, like that is really important. Um, so I wouldn't be the good person to really judge that. Uh, or, or I also don't want to be the person who tells a 22 years old, you know what, come, uh, be straight, uh, like a uh, talk about things straightforward and not really blah, blah, blah. And so that's, that's not my, I think, you know, hmm. I feel, um, and also besides, I'm, there are a lot of my artist friends to teach, but they like to teach too. I think I wouldn't, don't see myself as a teacher. It just doesn't seem like fun. It's not, I mean. But was it good for you when you went to school? Did you have teachers that helped you? <clears throat> yeah. I, I was, no, nah, it's a, yeah. I don't I wasn't really focused on a teacher. I was always focused on myself. I cannot say that loud. But I'm always like, you know sure I looked at the teacher and they looked at my work and I, I would take the thing serious, but I was I didn't I never had a um how you call it, like a, a master or like someone right. I would right. someone like, who says, Now listen here. Right, yeah, yeah. Well I think that actually they use like out of the people I know in my network a lot of the ones who I see are very strong artists and very uh, have their own vision. They never needed school. They never needed anything yeah. but time and yes. materials and space and just yes. fucking go. Just let them go. Let them go do their sure. thing, you know. Uh, whereas other people like me needed a lot more like, okay, this doesn't work. Okay, this doesn't work. Or, right. You know, I, I need a lot of input. Right, but that's, that's completely, you know, that is just from person to person different. Mm. But I did enjoy the, the school very much, and um, I think I had a very good a good time. And I see that as education in general is yes, the most important thing. And um, and who knows when I'm like you know maybe seventy or so, and I have a good offer of a school. Maybe I, w I would love to be an old teacher who like kind of you know just you could just be the funny old artist too. The you funny old artist talk shit about everything exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, we're about wrapping up here, but yeah. um, I uh, had a question. What was my question? Um, oh, yeah, so that's it? You think you're going to stay in America? Is that your place? You never know, but so far, I mean, love is the house I own. Um, and love is my wife, with my two cats. Um, what are their names? Whale and elephant. Whale and elephant, nice. Elephant, they're the, like, big, big gray and... Uh, we might have children also in future, so it's a kind of, I, I don't know yet, but at the moment I like it very much, but I just uh, talked with Makiko yesterday. We could also imagine to go like to Tokyo for like a half a year, a year, something like that. Well, the thing about being self-employed is that you can do things You like can do that. stuff like that. And then uh, New York, I want to go back to New York too. I mean, in one point, uh, we want to have an apartment there again. So, But as for the moment, as it is in life, you never know. You know, you don't miss the Swiss Alps. The funny thing is, where I live is very similar to the Swiss Alps. The mountains, yeah, rocks, okay. and um, so it, it it reminds me. And um, yeah, Switzerland. I mean, I go like three or four times a year to Switzerland. Sure, family, it's like, friends, yeah, and all. Yeah. It's not that I. I'm not sure if if I go back. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> right. I mean, that's basically the deal here. I'm from the U.S. and I've lived here for 10 years. Right, I have yeah. no idea if I'm going to go back right. or not. But you, you like it here? Um, uh, it's a very good place to get some work done. Yeah. Let me put it that way. Yeah. Um, if you come here with no idea what you want to do, it's a socialist nightmare. Yeah. But if you have a very specific, I mean, it's kind of like uh, what you said in the beginning about when you were in Switzerland, you got all the grants you could get. Yeah. There's that whole system, yeah. which can be very beneficial for someone who doesn't have a financial stability right, yeah. or, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm self-employed now. And that sort of thing 
is much easier here than it is in the right. United States. Yeah. Uh, you have to make a minimum amount of money in the United States just to keep your head above water. Right, yes, yes. Which is, you know, exciting. It sure makes everything exciting. But, uh, but you know, for me, basically everything that's good here is bad there, and everything that's great yeah. there is bad here. Yeah, yeah. And I would like to be in the similar situation to you guys where you're talking about wealth six months in Tokyo or, right. you know, my wife's Italian. It'd be fun to go live in Italy for right, a year yeah, or sure two, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, just having the freedom. It's right. always working towards having that freedom right? Yeah. to do what you want. But yeah, and when you don't have it, you find it in another way, you know, like you find it with a glass of wine in the night. <laughs> it's it's not hopeless. <laughs> it's not hopeless. I, I think so too. I mean, we have a, probably all a good life compared with many other other people. It's hard to complain yeah but we have to bitch at other people to you know no i, I like to keep complain their work. in general <laughs> but the, uh, i complain about contemporary art that's really innocent that's not really a big gravity ah, it's all absurd anyways who gives a fuck you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for your time i appreciate it no problem it. good uh, luck thank tonight. you it was, was so nice interview and nice microphones i love them <laughs> <laughs> heavy <Thanks dog>. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the Undergang Armchair. The intro and outro music was kindly provided by Johnny Ripper, and today's interstitial music was provided by CSUS. Special thanks to Gallery Neil Steck for letting us talk to Olaf in their space, and to Jesper Bundegaard for the portrait of Olaf on the show notes. You can find links to the music and tons of other conversations with great people on our complaint office of a website, undergang.net. If you do like the show, we would appreciate it if you'd take the time to leave a review on iTunes so others can find us. This show is produced in part with the kind support of the Danish Arts Council. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back in two weeks.